to take over a land that will belong to the Palestinians and build their own homeland on it. The main method they were using was ethnic cleansing. The methodology was mostly expulsion, intimidation, and massacre. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah. Since October 7th, 2023, about 2 million Palestinians in the Gaza Strip have had to flee for their lives to escape death and destruction, which has followed them even in areas they've been told are safe zones. Damar Kamil, Damar Kamil. Israel's war on Gaza has wrought an unprecedented humanitarian disaster. Pushed to and cornered in Rafah through air and land assaults by the Israeli army, Gazans fear the worst. People in power set out to investigate if population transfer of the Palestinians in Gaza and the occupied West Bank is Israel's ultimate goal. As of February 21st, 2024, close to 30,000 Palestinians have been killed by the Israeli army and more than 60,000 wounded and maimed. Thousands more are missing, many presumed dead under the rubble. Israel's real aim is clear, is to empty the land of Palestinians. A lot of people in the West uh, look at this uh, and say, how can people do not allow uh, Palestinians to get in? But in fact, this is a belief. Uh, and so the, the decision to close the border is actually a decision not to allow Israel to solve the conflict at the Palestinians' expense uh, and drive Palestinians out of their land. Most UN member states, including Western powers, have expressed concerns for the fate of Gaza's 2.3 million people. They have publicly condemned Israeli politicians and leaders who call for the expulsion of the Palestinians. The most important method used by these European Jewish settlers to take over a land that will belong to the Palestinians and build their own homeland on it, the main method they were using was ethnic cleansing, expulsion, transfer if you want. Professor Ilan Pape is Israel's foremost historian on the ethnic cleansing of Palestinians. It really begins in the late 19th century when an ideological movement called Zionism uh, decides that the best way to solve the problem of anti-Semitism in Europe and the best way for a modern future for the Jewish people is in the land of Palestine. So in that period between the late 19th century and the end of the First World War, Zionism becomes a fact on the ground in Palestine. At the time, it was the United Kingdom which was a chief architect and ally of Zionist aspirations in Palestine. The British ruled Palestine as part of their colonial portfolio between 1918 and 1948. So in the mid-1920s, the Zionist movement succeeds in buying land in Palestine in two places called Wadi Khawaris and Marji bin Ammar. Before Zionism, people also bought land. There were transactions. But the custom was the villagers who lived there for centuries remain. I mean, the, the change of ownership does not uproot. The Zionists, as landowners, the first thing they do, they go to the British government and say, you should evict the villagers. So already in 1926, they evicted 11 villages, uh, which means few thousand people were the first Palestinian victims of ethnic uh, cleansing. Deprived of their farmlands, expelled Palestinian villagers became part of the urban working class. Over the next decade, Palestinian resistance against Zionist settlers took the form of strikes and rallies, and increasingly, armed resistance. Killings of Palestinian leaders by the British contributed to the 1936 Arab Revolt. After the revolt, the British sent a commission to Palestine. And the commission was the first to think of the idea of two states. That included the relocation, the term was, of some of the population. 
Professor Assam Lassar is a Palestinian historian whose focus is the history of the British Mandate period. The main champion at the time was someone with the name of Yusuf Weitz. And Weitz was the head of the Jewish National Fund, whose job was to acquire lands for Jewish use only. Uh, the discussions went further to the level that they started to think of where do we move these Palestinians. So when we reach the end of the mandate, that is May 1948, you can see that the Zionist movement managed to buy 5 to 6% of the land of Palestine, that's all, because people resisted uh, and uh, not everybody was willing to send land, understanding that purchase of land immediately is followed by eviction of people. It's a settler colonial movement and replacement. Like all settler colonial movements, if they don't complete the takeover of the land and the transfer of the people, they will continue. Because they really believe ideologically that without a total control of the land geographically, but also demographically, namely to have an absolute majority or just an absolute presence, that's also the main motivation for the Israeli actions today in the Gaza Strip, and also it's the Israeli plans for the day after. First of all, they prepare a master plan for the expulsion in March called Plan D, Plan Dalet, and in April and the beginning of May, they implement it. And the first stage of Plan D was to take over the urban space of Palestine, and they depopulate most of the Palestinian cities. Out of the 75,000 people who lived in Haifa, only 3,000 remained. The Israeli Ministry of Intelligence on October 13th, 2023, recommended the forcible and permanent expulsion of the 2.3 million Palestinians in the Gaza Strip to Egypt's Sinai Peninsula. After a leaked copy was published by the Israeli magazine Plus 972, Israel's Ministry of Intelligence verified the authenticity of the document. Experts say today's events are a continuation of a seven-decade-long Israeli practice of forcing Palestinians out of their homes and then barring them from ever returning. First of all, there was an ethnic cleansing of about 300,000 Palestinians in the immediate aftermath of the June 67 war. Since 67 until uh, today, Israel used an incremental policy of ethnic cleansing. Around half a million Palestinians were uh, uh, expelled in one way or another, or banned from returning, which is the same. Past policies demonstrate that attempts to empty Gaza are not new. In 1967, and there was a plan, particularly, of uh, reducing the number of refugees in Gaza. And there were talks about let's destroy the refugee camps and transfer this population to Jordan until Jordan started to prevent Gazans from entering Jordan. In the occupied West Bank, more than 300 Palestinians have been killed by both Israeli settlers and the army since the war in Gaza began in a parallel battlefield. Israel has a mechanism of about 200,000 people are daily employed to police the Palestinians, wherever they are. Uh, and part of this policing is also dealing with uh, sometimes individual cases of ethnic cleansing. But it's uh, a perpetual reality. It doesn't, it doesn't end. We cannot uh, today say that mass transfer is a thing of the past that cannot be done.